Previously on the Stanley Parable. No! And then it resumes. I would, but that phone is really, really annoying, so... Nope! As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, <laughs> did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually <laughs> chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. That's not what now, happened. Picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Oh God. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 what? kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Practice? Uh... Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? eight? Less? And finally, eight? if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago. Okay. And see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Um, okay. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. But it's fun! It's got the baby game, it's got the freaking jumping off the stairs ending. It's a, it's a great room. No 
just there, you'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. <coughs> that means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <coughs> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> no! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. No, he didn't. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. Oh, God. I have to. <laughs> oh, God. He was so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You yes. just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? No. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. <laughs> that thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, God. Uh oh My story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. <laughs> Oh. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. <laughs> that means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, <laughs> he entered the door on his left. No, he didn't. <laughs> no! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. <laughs> Behave exactly as Stanley would. <laughs> that means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, he didn't. No! no! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. <laughs> Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yay! Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to oh. his boss's office. I want to go downstairs. Uh, wait. Is this right? No, this is not right. 
Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night Shark 115? Stanley spoke the code, Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? <coughs> Please speak the code into the receiver, otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Um... I can't speak okay, in... Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better <laughs> things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. I could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. <laughs> oh, God. When Stanley came to oh, God. two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this Credits. is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Okay, is that it? Well, that was that ending. Okay, I think we... <laughs> oh, look what I did. Look what I did. Yeah, let's leave. Screw the narrator. <laughs> I like him, but I'm not going to let him force me to do stuff. No way. This is my game. This is my parable. My name may not be Stanley, but it is still my parable. And I'm going to do whatever the hell I want with it. So you know what? Have fun in the boss's office while I go off to do some better things back in my office. That sounds like a plan to me. Oh, wait a minute. This door is open. You are now leaving. Oh, okay. Cool. This 
Escape Pod Bay 4760. Are we leaving in an escape pod or something? Okay, cool. Wait. Oh. I can't really see what's going on here. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Wait, hold on. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Co-workers that was it? What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, then. Okay, so this was actually another ending I had to look up. Uh, as you can see, we have this computer here that says awaiting input. And what we have to do is we have to actually uh, turn on the computer, and every time we turn one of them on, we have to restart and then find another computer during the next playthrough. And basically do that until all the computers are turned on. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay, here's the second computer. It's uh, 423. Okay, so the next computer is actually uh, over here, right before the boss's office. So let's turn this on. Okay, so here's the fourth computer, 434, right near the beginning. And the final computer is actually Stanley's computer. Oh my. Oh God. This is, uh, yeah, wow. So yeah, this was a thing. Belief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's hmm. office, hoping he might find an answer there. Broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. No, he didn't. Come on, it's a broom closet. It's cool. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet no reason to still be here. I disagree. I want to stay here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. I don't care. The broom closet is awesome. I want to stay here. Are you... Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Who says I'm standing? You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, <laughs> at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Oh, oops. Uh, hold on. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe, when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Ow! 
Did you get the broom closet ending? <laughs> the broom closet ending was my favourite. I hope your friends find this concerning. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably <laughs> got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. I got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and we're just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Nah, I'm good. Eight. Yes! <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so, you know, now that we've actually uh, seen some of the endings, I feel like cheating. Let's see, SV underscore cheats one. Stanley, this is me being serious. In fact, okay. this is my serious room. It's where I come to be serious. Makes sense. That table is the most serious table I could find. I yeah. looked at many, many tables, hundreds of tables. It's possible I looked at over a thousand tables. I honestly don't know. The specific number isn't as important as the understanding that of all tables I looked at, this one is the most serious. Okay. I relate this story to impress upon you the extent to which this is the most serious room I have, which is why I brought you here. You just tried to activate server cheats, which of course runs the risk of breaking the entire game. Oh no! You've got no respect for the strict order of scripted narrative events, and I just can't have that. It's time to get serious, Stanley. No jokes, no games. Outside of this room, I might be more tolerant of those things, but now we're in the room. Which is why I'm subjecting you to the most serious punishment I can think of. One hundred billion trillion years standing here in the serious room hmm. perhaps after that we can talk about the severity of your actions and whether you've learned anything but until then serious room go <laughs> okay well i guess we can't cheat in this game oh sad face okay i actually tried to uh, get that speed run ending again and i still couldn't and I actually did a little research, and I found out that the more you restart the game, like hit escape and then hit restart, sometimes the game will actually modify the path that you have to get to the very end. And, you know, the ending you want to get is the freedom ending, where you actually make it outside. That's the ending that they want you to make. So, apparently, if you keep playing the game and keep restarting, sometimes they'll give you a scenario where the uh, double doors are right in front of you when you start. And I think that's how you're supposed to get the speedrun ending. And I believe also if you keep doing it after a while, you won't have to input that code either. Uh, I was in a situation where the double doors were actually not too far from where I was. And then also I didn't have to give the code, but I still didn't get the speedrun ending for whatever reason. So I'm not sure what exactly is the uh, determining factor for that. Maybe I have to get even luckier and get a better scenario. But um, either way, that's just an achievement anyway. I'm not going to be focusing too much on that. Uh, as for the other achievements, hold on just a moment. 
just to uh, very quickly uh, look through these. I did a little bit of research on these achievements. Uh, for the one you have to play for an entire duration of a Tuesday, and then also the one where you can uh, like not play the game in five years, uh, you can just like adjust your computer's uh, system clock and do that like no problem. Uh, not sure about unachievable. I think you have to use like a Steam client or uh, like some kind of program that allows you to activate these uh, achievements. Uh, I don't support using that kind of software, but I think that's what this was intended to be done with. Uh, you can't jump. I have no idea. I did research and they said if you press the space bar a number of times, it will give you the achievement, but I tried it and it wouldn't work for some reason, so I have no idea. And then, of course, there's the speed run, which, uh, like I said earlier, I couldn't quite get either. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, basically it for the achievements. As for endings, uh, there is one ending that uh, I did not show in this video. I'm going to link in the video description instead. And that is if you actually play the baby game for four hours. And I really don't feel like doing that for four hours. It's just not really worth it. I'm just going to link you guys to that ending and show it off that way. And I'll also do the same thing for with any other things I find out, whether it's uh, through you guys in the comments section or just... You know, as other people discover things over time. Keep in mind, this game's only been out for like two weeks or... No, no barely even one week, actually. So, uh, you know, there's still things out there. There's still bound to be things out there. And I'm sure that people are still going to be looking and tearing this game apart just to find them. But uh, that's all I'm going to do as far as content for this game. Uh, if there's a whole bunch of content I find uh, throughout the uh, coming days, weeks, months, I could always make another follow-up, but for now, I think I am going to move on to something else. This was seriously a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, too. It was just something different, something new, something unique, and I really wanted to share it with you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it for what it was. So this has been Slim Kirby. This has been The Stanley Parable. And I will see you guys next time for my upcoming projects. Later, Star Warriors.